A fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high old silver. The Lone Ranger. <laughs> of the western United States is also a history of transportation. First prairie schooners, then the Pony Express, and finally the railroad helped bring civilization to the new country. It was the mask rider of the plains, however, that did most to establish law and order on the frontier. He fought crime and criminals throughout the length and breadth of seven states, and the memory of his deeds will remain as long as the memory of the early West itself. Now return with us to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. We're riding east to the railroad. Someone's waiting for us. Hi, old Silver. Zeke Hackett had once ranged cattle all the way from the town of Hinsdale through Cedar Valley and beyond. In the days of his prosperity, he had befriended numberless men and women who had come to him starving or sick or homeless. With the end of the days of the open range, Zeke's prosperity faded away. And with his prosperity, the fair-weather friends who had taken advantage of his generosity. In the end, he had been able to retain title only to Cedar Valley and a small strip of land to the westward and here grazed the shrunken remnants of his once vast herds. We see Zeke now, sitting on the porch of his home with his wife, Martha, watching the approach of their nearest neighbor, Duke Bradley, with two of his men. Well, there he comes, Martha, riding up here just as bold as you please. And ten years ago, I'd have taken my shooting iron and run him off my place so fast he'd have scorched the air getting away. Times have changed, Zeke. Not for the better, neither. Now, when he gets here, you treat him just as nice as you're able. It don't do to go looking for trouble. Marthy, I feel like to bust. Well, you can just hold in that temper of yours. There ain't nobody else willing to give us cash for Cedar Valley right now. Just because Duke's got everybody so blame scared, they're afraid to offer anything. I ain't saying that's not so. And if I could only prove my suspicions, I'd be willing to bet every last penny I got that Duke's the fellow to blame for them water holes in the valley being poisoned. Now, Zeke, you have no reason to say that. Huh? Don't need no reason. All us could tell a crook by the way my rheumatics act. <laughs> Won't you ever get over that notion? Well, it's so. I get within ten yards of a crook, and I get to aching like somebody's using me for a pincushion. <laughs> I've heard you say that for 40 years. Oh, no, I can feel it coming on right now. You behave yourself. Howdy, Zeke. Howdy yourself. Didn't you hear me? Mm. Well, you ready to talk business, Zeke? Oh. Something ailing you? It's them dog-blasted rheumatics. Never did have them so bad afore. Well, now, I'm sorry to hear that. Didn't know you was troubled that way. Oh. Don't you pay any attention to him, Mr. Bradley. Zeke's just like a big baby with his ailments. Mm, you keep still, Marthy. 
So you come to make me an offer for Cedar Valley again. Is that it? I heard in town you changed your mind about sailing. It wasn't because I wanted to. No? But there ain't no use trying to run cattle where they die off like flies from pies and water. It's just terrible. We've lost half our critters already. Uh-huh. I was afraid of that. Now, if you'd sold out to me before, it wouldn't have happened. Mm. How much you offering? Well, last time I said I'd give you 3000 Wasn't that it, Sawbuck? Yeah. yeah. That's why I recollect it, boss. Mm-hmm. Well, it ain't much, but I guess I... Now, wait a minute, Zeke. Huh? That 3000 was for the valley and all the critters in it at the time I made the offer. But, of course, you wouldn't expect me to offer as much now... Seeing that half your critters have died off since. You you mean you won't give us these thousand even now? Two thousand's my best price. Oh, my rheumatics is something fierce. Duke, two thousand's the same as robbery. Why, five years ago, I could have sold the valley and the cattle for thirty thousand. <laughs> this ain't five years ago. Then, then make it twenty-five hundred. Nope. I just give you my first and last price. I ought to... You ought to what? I ought to tell you to... Don't say anything you'll be sorry for. We need that money mighty bad. But, Martha, to have nothing left but that strip of land over westward and a little handful of cash, after all we used to have. Oh, it's hard. But we can't hold out longer. (laughs) You're a real sensible woman, ma'am. I just wished I wasn't. But at our age... There, there, honey. I'll take the offer, I reckon. That's fine, Zeke. But I just wish I could figure out why you're so anxious to get the Valley Duke. Them water holes will be pison no matter who owns them. Well, you see, Zeke, I gotta figure this way. Most likely it's something underground seeping in and poisoning the springs. Maybe in time it'll all be washed away. Maybe. You can't afford to wait, of course, but I can. You're sure it ain't something else poisoning the water? Meaning? Well, never mind. I said I'd sell, and having no choice, I'll keep the bargain all right. <laughs> Your rheumatics ain't so bad you can't get to town this afternoon to sign the papers, are they? Oh, I reckon I can make it. And come on, fellas. I'll be expecting you at Lawyer Winton's office about three. I'll be there. And don't you forget the 2,000. Oh, these rheumatics will be the death of me yet. <laughs> that old fool and his rheumatics. <laughs> All right, fellas, get to your saddles. We're riding to town. Something underground pies in the springs, eh? <laughs> Zeke can't prove no different, can he? Shut your mouth, you two. <laughs> Come get on, up. get up there. Get up. In the meantime, some distance to the east, rumors that the railroad planned to extend its lines westward became a practical certainty. A small group of surveyors started making their way across country with chains and transits. And one day, the lone ranger and his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, rode up to the crew. Hello there. A mass band. What the... Who's over? Who wants chain points? Outlaws. What do you want here? We're not outlaws, Jerry. You know my name. You're Jerry Duncan, aren't you? We never met a four that I can recollect. Your superintendent told me about you. Mr. Stanley? Yes. How come outlaws like you know him? I said we aren't outlaws. Tonto and I became acquainted with him a long time ago. Mm. We help him when him in plenty trouble. Yeah? He told us the railroad would build and that you'd be in charge of the surveying crew. Glass that he shouldn't have talked so much. He knew that anything he told us would be held in confidence. Look here, stranger, if that information gets out, it's going to cost the railroad a fortune to buy the land it needs. But we won't repeat what we know. I'm afraid most of the people through here suspect your purpose already. Maybe so. But they ain't so blame sure that they're going to turn down a fair price for their land. Tonto and I have been watching the route you're laying out. From what we've seen, you'll have to go through Cedar Valley. Yeah. Well, that's a long ways off yet. But it's directly on the way to Hinsdale. (laughs) For all you know, maybe we ain't going to Hinsdale. Maybe we're going to Perryville instead. Stanley said that Hinsdale had been definitely decided upon. Mister, you know too blame much. Either you're an awful good friend of Mr. Stanley's, or you've blackmailed him into saying a lot of things he shouldn't have. Which do you believe? Well, I ain't so sure. You're wearing a mask like an outlaw right enough, but somehow I got a feeling you're different from what you seem to be. Thanks, Jerry. I give you my word that we're to be trusted. 
But what makes you so interested in where the railroad's going? Everybody's interested in that. But I particularly wanted it to go through Cedar Valley. Why, you... you... Watch out. Careful, Jerry. Put down that gun. I see it now, you dirty crooks. Come in here with your smooth talk. I don't understand. What's wrong? Don't know what's wrong, huh? You're two of Duke Bradley's hired gun hands. Of course, you wouldn't know what it's all about. Duke Bradley? Ooh, him. Playing innocent, huh? But I don't know... All you did was cheat the best fellow that ever lived out of that valley. Zeke Hackett owns Cedar Valley, doesn't he? You know, blame well he don't. Your boss found out about where the railroad is going and bought it from Zeke for almost nothing. Feller named Duke by Valley? All this talk yours about Mr. Stanley telling you the things you knowed. Last year, you got your information straight from Duke Bradley. How did he find out about the railroad? The way he always finds out things, by cheating and bribing and dirty gunplay. You'll have to believe me, Jerry. This is the first we knew about it. Yeah? We hoped the railroad would go through Cedar Valley because we thought Zeke owned it. If the railroad bought from him, he'd have a chance to rebuild his fortune. You ain't pulling the wool over my eyes. Wait. You polecats. Zeke put me through school when I never had a cent to my name. Put down that gun. And right now I'm paying back part of what I owe him. Men, grab these fellas. Come on. You not like get out. Come on, come on. Oh, hey. 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 You. Hey. You. Mr. We scared him off anyhow. That's it, crooks. All right, all right, men. There ain't no use chasing them. We'll settle them fellas later on. <laughs> The masked man and Tonto raced away from the crew of surveyors, then decided to continue on to Zeke Hackett's ranch many miles distant. They had known Zeke in the days of his prosperity and had sympathized with him when his fortunes declined. Now learning of Duke Bradley's action for the first time, they determined to investigate. We see them at the end of their journey, reining in their horses beside the corral where Zeke is standing. Zeke! Doggone my hide if it ain't the masked feller in Tonto. <laughs> Been a long time since we've met. Uh, too blame long. <laughs> Tonto, glad to see you. Well, <laughs> Tonto, there ain't so many feel that way anymore. I can recollect when I had more friends than I knew what to do with. But seems like when a feller's down, they sort of forget about him. I know one who hasn't, Zeke. Yeah? Jerry Duncan. <laughs> Jerry? <laughs> Say, now, there's one of the finest young fellers ever was. Met up with him when he was just an orphan kid. All the sort of felt toward him like I would have if he'd been my son. And he thinks a lot of you. Your friends are his? No, I'm afraid he thought us outlaws. <laughs> Recollect when we first met up. First I figured you was outlaws myself. Then when my rheumatics didn't get to aching, I says to myself, Zeke, there's an honest feller, mask or no mask. Jerry gave us some bad news. Yeah? He told us that you'd had to sell the valley. Yep, I did all right. Mm, Tonto, not like that. Well, Tonto, I never thought to see the day I'd sell it. But me and Marty got down to where we just had to have some cash. Duke Bradley bought it, didn't he? Uh-huh. I don't suppose he told you what he wanted it for. Oh, he'll graze cattle there, I suppose. That wasn't his purpose, Zeke. He knew the railroad would have to buy that property. Huh? What's that? It's true. I wouldn't have told you about the railroad's plans, but Duke seems to have known them, and he used your ignorance to cheat you. Well, I'll be... So he did poison them water holes. He poisoned the water holes in the valley? He must have. I can't prove it. But just as sure as I'm standing here, he did that very thing. And he can't be brought to justice? There's no way at all. But there's something else he can be brought to. Yes? And that's the business end of shooting iron. You stay here Wait, while I get Zeke. My... But I... Listen to me. Perhaps there's another way to punish him. I don't know what to be. Oh, golly. Just thinking of that critter's brought on them pains again. You can't fight a man like Duke Bradley with guns. The surest way I know of. No, Zeke. I have still a better plan. Huh? And from what you've told me, I'm sure it'll work. Now listen to me. The curtain falls on the first act of our thrilling Lone Ranger drama. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Now 
to continue our story. A week after Duke Bradley had bought Cedar Valley from Zeke Hackett for a fraction of its true worth, the rancher was talking with one of his men. Well, Lim, <laughs> before the day's over, I'll be banking about forty or $50,000. Will it be that soon, boss? Yep. I heard today that the fellow representing the railroad will be in town to buy up land. <laughs> Good enough. Huh? When Zeke hears about it, I'll bet he'll be fit to be tired. Well, I can just see him. He'll be yelping about his rheumatics so as he could be heard clear to the next county. Isn't we it? ain't worrying about him. You reckon the railroad will pay that much cash? They'll pay. It'd cost them ten times as much to cut across the hills. Yeah, anyhow, that much. <laughs> I'll be making myself a nice profit. Two thousand a Zeke for the valley, and five hundred to pay that fellow in the railroad office for telling us which way the line's going to be built. Golly, and all the rest clear. The best part of it is we couldn't have lost no matter which way the railroad was built. Uh-huh. If they'd decided to go to Perryville instead of Hinsdale, they'd had to cross that land over to the west that Zeke owns. <laughs> if that had been the case, why... Maybe them water holes over there might have been poisoned. Eh? <laughs> Funny thing about water holes. Can't never tell where they're likely to go bad. <laughs> they saw Buck riding up. I was hoping he'd be getting back. I aimed to send him into town after some supplies we're needing. Yeah, maybe I'll go with him. I need a boss. Huh? The surveyors are here. <laughs> Going through the valley, eh? But well, they ain't. What's that? The railroad's changed his plans. Go on, local. I ain't. The railroad's not coming to Hinsdale. What, I can... It's going to Perryville. Them surveyors are on Zeke's land. That western strip of his? Yeah. You, you seen him yourself? No, not exactly. But I heard it in town. It can't be. We ought to see for ourselves. Come on. That's just what we're going to do. I never believed it at first. But even the sheriff said he seen him. If that fellow in the railroad office double-crossed me, I'll... He might have, figuring you couldn't prove nothing. And figuring if he gave out the wrong information, the railroad couldn't prove nothing either. He'll pay for it if he did. Did he there, blast you. <sighs> Let's hurry. I'm ready. Get up there. Get up there. Almost the same time, the Lone Ranger rode swiftly into town on his great horse, Silver, reined in before the sheriff's office, and hurried inside. What the? Don't go for your gun, Sheriff. A masked man of all the blasted You're nerves. going to do what I say. You... I'll explain later. But there's no time to waste now. You'll be jailed for this. Perhaps, but right now you're coming with me. Bradley led his men at a swift gallop toward the narrow stretch of land which Zeke Hackett still owned. As they approached their destination, Duke saw that the report he had received was correct. Move it, move it, move it. Move it. Move it. Yeah. Right. You there. You calling me? You heard me, didn't you? No, no, I heard you. I didn't care much about your style of calling either. Don't get smart, oh. mister. Ah, you Shut up, Lem. I'll talk to this fellow. Now, what I want to know is what you and your men are doing over here. What we're doing is our business. But I'm making it mine. Yeah? Let me handle them, boss. Maybe a little gun weapon will do them some good. Anytime you fellas want to start something, I'm willing. Look here. I thought the railroad was going through Cedar Valley. You did, huh? It was supposed to be built to Hinsdale. But this is the way to Perryville. And what if it is? Just this. I own Cedar Valley. I paid good cash for it. But if the railroad's going to Perryville, I won't be able to sell it. Well. Now, ain't that just too bad? You... You're Duke Bradley, ain't you? That's me. Well, I heard about the way you cheated old Zeke. You thought you was going to collect big money. But this is Zeke's land, and now it's him that's going to collect. Duke, we ought to fill that fellow in the railroad office full of land. It was him that got you in this place. Serve you right. I'll oh, you. Sawbuck. But I Come tell on. you. Get back on your horses. We ain't licked yet. <laughs> Ever since the day Zeke Hackett had spoken to the Lone Ranger, his bitter mood had passed, and his puzzled wife frequently observed the old man chuckling to himself. When questioned, he refused to give his reason, and Martha found her curiosity increasing. 
we see the elderly couple in the living room of their home. <laughs> For pity's sake, Zeke, quit your laughing to yourself. I declare, sometimes I think you're losing what little sense you ever had. <laughs> do you now, Martha? <laughs> I do. Oh, now, Zeke, you tell me what it is you're keeping to yourself this way. It hasn't got anything to do with the valley, has it? Uh, you'll find out all in good time. But why can't you tell but me? Right now, all the talking and begging in the world won't make me say a word. I give my promise to the masked man, and I ain't going back on it. Oh, you're still just as stubborn as when you was courting me. Uh-huh. <laughs> That's how I got you, wasn't it? <laughs> oh, oh. oh, for heaven's sake, Zeke, now what ailing uh, Just look outside. Why? Why, it's Duke Bradley with them two no-count gun hands of his. The polecats. Come in, blast ya. Oh. Oh, them rheumatics. They're at it again. Zeke, I changed my mind. Yeah? I don't want the valley no more. Don't want the valley? Kind of late in deciding, ain't you? Maybe, but not too late. You, uh, you want we should give you back the 2000 you paid us? Well, if that's it, we can't do it. Most of it's spent. I don't want the cash. But you... I'm here to make a trade. A trade? I got the papers here for you to sign and everything. Lem and Sawbuck can be the witnesses. Why, you ain't even said what you want to trade for yet. I'll give you back the valley for the land you got over west. Oh, so that's it. You're getting all the best of the deal. <laughs> like blazes I am. You've seen them surveyors over there and you want that land to sell to the railroad. Well, Duke Bradley, you listen to me. That land's mine and I ain't selling it or trading it or giving it away. And that's flat. Yeah? Now you can get out of here. Because we can't do business. I reckon we will. I said get out of here. Please, Zeke, don't fight with him. I'll sit out. Oh, you shoved him. Blast you, I'll... You'll trade me that land, that's what you'll do. You can't make me. <laughs> yeah, that's what you think. I ain't got the time to waste on you like I did before. So we're getting this over with right now. The land's mine and I'm keeping it. <laughs> Maybe you'll change your mind after I tell you a few things. You... First off... How do you think them water holes in the valley got poisoned? I got a blame good notion. Uh-huh. It was me and the boys done it. That was when we figured it was the valley the railroad wanted. You, you beast. <laughs> Maybe that'll show you we ain't to be fooled with. Go ahead and poison all the water holes you want to. That don't make no difference now. It's too late for that. It wouldn't make no difference now if we did. But there's other ways of changing your mind. Ways you maybe wouldn't like. I ain't afraid. Show them, Sawbuck. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Oh, you almost hit him. When I get my gun? Stay where you are. Go ahead, Sawbuck. <laughs> oh, my vase. The vase I brought with me from the east. Changing your mind yet, Zeke? I'll have the law on you. No, you won't. There's three of us and only two of you. The law will have to take our word again yours. Oh, Zeke, don't hold out. They might kill you. You, you got the papers with you, you say? <laughs> uh-huh, right here. Give them to me. I'll sign. Now you're showing sense. You just put your name right there. <laughs> Fellas, didn't I tell you we weren't through yet? Now I reckon maybe next time you'll believe me. point of a gun, Zeke was forced to sign the papers which returned him Cedar Valley in exchange for the strip of land where the surveyors were active. This done, he accompanied Duke and his men to town where the papers were notarized. But Zeke did not return to his home. Instead, he remained in town until evening. We see him now in the cafe, watching the approach of Jerry Duncan and the second man. Howdy, Jerry. I've been waiting for you. Gosh, it's good to see you again, Zeke. Shake hands with Mr. Stanley. Glad to meet you, Mr. Stanley. It's a pleasure. Mr. Stanley's our superintendent. Uh-huh. Uh, sit down, won't you? Yeah. Thanks. Look, Zeke. There's Duke Bradley and them two men of his. They're right where they can hear everything that's said. <laughs> Let them. That's what I want. I understand you're the owner of Cedar Valley, Mr. <laughs> Hackett. That I am. Would you be interested in selling? Not for no $2,000. What's that? That's all right, Mr. Stanley. It's just a little joke, is he? Oh, <laughs> you uh, got any particular price in mind, Mr. Stanley? I have, and it's fair, I believe. $30,000. Well, now, that's something. Hey, what's going on here? You're trying to pull some kind of a slick deal, Zeke? Jerry, who are these men? Oh, they're the fellows who own Cedar Valley for a while, Mr. Stanley. But it weren't for long. Oh, gee. <laughs> I think I've heard of them. I ask a question, I want an answer. One moment. 
What business is this of yours? I'll tell you what business it is of mine. If you're buying the valley for the railroad, then I've been cheated. Cheated? You heard me. And by that fellow sitting right there. <laughs> He's pointing at you, Jerry. I never cheated nobody. No? I suppose you didn't tell me the railroad was going to Perryville. Nope, I didn't. It was you who said that. I just didn't bother to put you right. Boy, <laughs> you... Duke, they tricked us. And we're stuck with that land that ain't no good to us. Well, we won't be for long. You better be mighty careful, Duke. You sneaking old fool. You ain't tricking me like this. I... Zeke, watch out. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Now it sounds like you got the rheumatics, Duke. My hand, it's smashed. Oh. No, it isn't, Duke. I just hit your gun. Oh, what a so you want a gunfight, huh? Well, Raise I saw your you. hands, all of you. And keep them raised. Sheriff, jail that mask, fella. He just... It's stopped. you I'm Galen Duke. You and your pars. You ain't got nothing on us. That's where you're wrong. Go ahead, Sheriff. Jail the coyotes. You can't. You ain't got no reason. It's your own fault you're going to jail, Duke. But I... Sheriff that... and I were outside when you forced Zeke to trade back. You made him accept the valley at the point of a gun. The masked man's telling the truth, Duke. I seen it all. But Zeke told us not to do nothing unless you tried to make trouble over this deal. It's a frame-up. But you're getting exactly what you deserve. And it was the mask feller that done it. It was him and Tonto that got Jerry to bring his crew here to survey that other land so as Duke could think the railroad had changed its plans. <laughs> the first time I met up with the mask feller, I figured him to be an outlaw. I sure learned different. All right, Duke. You fellas are coming along with me. I got a sail already picked out for you. If I ever get out of... You won't. Duke, this is the worst luck I ever seen. To think that we forced Zeke to take back the land he wanted all the time. And then on top of that, they have to go to jail for beating ourselves out of all that cash. I don't care what you call it. That ain't justice. <laughs> you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.